everyone, I'm Tally, this is Farrell, and we are Bored of It, and welcome to our preview video for Joyride Survival of the Fastest. Now we were very kindly sent a prototype of this game by the publisher, so that will be you know what we've been using to play and to do this preview, and the game is coming to Kickstarter on August 15th. So this is a racing game, it can come in two different versions, so the prototype we have is you could say the main version, which is one to four players, has two different maps, uh, although these maps can be rearranged with kind of uh, tokens and the way that you race. But it's a bit zany, it's a bit of a mix between Heat and Mario Kart. <laughs> and there is also going to be another version that you can get on Kickstarter, which is a two player only version. So the maps are smaller and tighter and it's designed for two players, although you can play this with two as well. Yeah. And then there's also going to be an all-in, which gives you some extra maps in both of those games. But we're obviously only going to be talking about the one to four player because that is what we've experienced. So let's get to how to play and then we'll tell you what we think. Joyride uses a dice system. So for everyone at the very beginning of the game, you're all gonna roll two dice. It will tell you how much to move and the dice have values of one to three on them. So I've just rolled five. So then yeah, I will just go five hexes and it's a hex based system. So that's just how you begin the game. And then at the beginning of every turn, players will take turns in turn order and based on who's in the highest gear. So if you've played Heat, it's similar where you can shift up and shift down. And the higher the gear, the quicker you get to go and the more dice you roll. So you begin your turn and you'll have some dice in your rear view mirror and you'll be in a specific type of gear, let's say I'm in second. And you have the opportunity to lock up to four of those dice, which means you take the number that they have. So I could lock these and then I get five again, so one, two, three, four, five. Before I move, I could decide to turn, uh, which is called uh, searing, and you can kind of just turn, so you have like a front three hexes in front of you, and you can turn into the left one or into the, the right one before you move. Then you decide whether to shift, and you can shift up one or you can shift down one. And this will increase or decrease the number of dice you have. So let's say I shift up. You then roll the, the new dice in and also any dice that you didn't lock. Uh, so I've got three, so then I go another three. But alternatively, in this time when I move, I can also steer. So I could go one, two, three, like that. And now I'm going in a different direction. And the only time you could steer uh, both when you're locking dice and when you're rolling them is if you're in second gear. Otherwise, you can only steer at one of those. So a lot of the, the kind of dice management in Joyride is about gambling when to roll and when to turn, because obviously you're stuck in these lines and there's a lot of obstacles, there's other cards in the way, and you can very easily get caught out and crash into a wall, take some damage and have to drop down a gear. So do you want to talk about how the general race works? Yeah, so everyone picks a starting position. So here in this particular map, we have the starting position on the ramp, but this is kind of interchangeable per map yeah. where it might start. Uh, so everyone will start in the same position. And then you have to essentially go through all of the numbered checkpoints in order, back to the start line, go around again, and it's two laps. I think it depends on the map, but yeah, can, um, you can set it, it as well, yeah. So we've been Usually doing two. two laps, exactly. You can decide the route that you want to take as long as you go through these numbered checkpoints in the right order. Some of them will also allow you to pick up a loot token where it gets very Mario Kart. So you'll pick one of these at random, they're face down, and essentially it will give you some kind of either <laughs> weapon or bonus. This one, for instance, is some nitro gas, which you can use whenever you like. Uh, to help you go a bit faster, but there are some other weapons in there, like rockets, which is my personal favourite. You always pick the rockets. Uh, I like to try to shoot you because I'm usually behind, so yeah, that one's particularly that 
interesting for me. I always get the mines and I have to drop them because I'm ahead. Yes, exactly. Uh, so you take your loot and you have two slots for weapons. So yeah, you can just decide to use them whenever. Some maps have some kind of different features. This one, like I said, we start on the ramp. There's another ramp here, which will allow you to, um, if you, do a, uh, you can do another steer, right? Because it has yeah. grippage. So yeah. you grippage. wouldn't usually be able to <laughs> steer again, maybe if you've already used up your, your steer. Yeah. But on the ramp, you can do another steer. So that could be used tactically uh, to try and get you into the direction that you want to go in. And essentially. you can also jump over people. You can jump over people as From well. From the ramp. Exactly, yeah. Just little things like that. Yes. So what you do need to be careful of, like you said, half the tactical thinking, the strategy is to use the steering and the dice and the gambling so that you avoid either crashing into other cars or crashing into the barrier, which has happened to me multiple times. Happens everywhere. I've rolled the dice, hoping to only maybe get, if you're kind of facing this way, uh, or I just hope to get another two movements maybe, and then you end up with six. Kaboom. Yeah. Uh, so then you have to basically take a damage and there's different damage slots on your player board, which will make you less and less effective the more and more damage you take. So it might mean that you lock off one of your weapon slots and you can only hold one weapon. You can take damage in your locked dice slots and you have four. Or if you start taking more and more damage, you'll have to lock off your higher gear slots and that's going to mean you have less dice to roll. You're not going to be able to go as fast. So you do want to avoid taking damage, um, although you can strategically start smashing into other players, which is mm -hmm. always quite fun. That's where like the chaos comes in. Maybe you take a damage just for the sake of hitting someone else and getting them to spin the other way. So we've had some situations where maybe I've been facing the exact direction that I want to go. Somebody like Farrell comes along and kind of smashes into the side of me and then knocks me you against the wall. spin out, basically, yeah. And you get a spin out. So there's a few times where people have ended up facing the wrong way because someone's driven through them. <laughs> it's quite funny. It is quite funny. And the steering is pretty hard. You have to be very careful of how you're steering and doing U-turns are quite hard. So you need a someone, lot of awareness. If someone comes and crashes into you and ruins your path, then super annoying, but then that's where the fun and the calamity comes in for the game. Yeah, so I think last thing we'll say before we get to what we think is you also have some little powers. And in this one, it comes with kind of generic ones that everyone gets. And then I think unique ones for each player color. And these are things you can use at any time. Like one of them is like do a handbrake turn, so you get to do like extra turnings rather than just one. Um, shift down or up an extra gear, so in a pinch you can kind of drop dice or get them quicker. And these will refresh based on how far behind the leader you are. So when you complete a lap, if you're fourth, then you'll get to flip back all three of them. If you're first, you don't get to flip any, basically. Mm -hmm. And the other two players are in the middle, right? So that's also just a little touch that you can kind of use tactically. Yeah. But let's go to what we think. First thing to note before we share our thoughts is this is, of course, a prototype. So I think everything's pretty solid here uh, in terms of components. And I know this is kind of almost final in terms of rules and uh, map layout and components, although these are, I think, um, not quite handmade, but they're not mass produced, so they're expected to be better in the final uh, edition. But obviously all this is subject to change, which is why it's only a preview. Um, but yeah, I think things are most final because I've asked the, the publisher basically. Yeah, I think it's pretty, yeah, pretty solid for a yeah. prototype at least. So if it's, you know, similar to this quality in final production, then I think it would be pretty good. Yeah. So I think first thing is that we quite like it. Yes. I think First play on the train map, which is obviously probably the most boring, just to learn the rules. Uh, I maybe wasn't sure, but definitely the more we've played, the more I've enjoyed it. And it also has kind of a unique presence as well, because there's a lot of racing games now. And we're actually going to have a comparison video out uh, a few days after this between some of the mo more popular racing games. I think this has its own identity and sits in the middle, because yeah. it, it's quite tactical and the focus is on racing. But you also have this wacky element of crashing into other people, crashing into walls, of items, rockets. And it hits a nice midpoint 
Um, because, you know, if you say in Thunder Road you have player elimination and yeah. the whole game's about griefing other people, whereas in Heat it's very linear racing, you're on track. You want to go as fast as possible. Has more maneuverability. Yeah. This is the one that most reminds me of Mario Kart. Yeah. So out of the ones, I mean, I'm having a bit of a moment with these racing games. Like you said, we've been playing them quite a lot and we're going to do a comparison video and I'm really, really loving them, actually. Mm -hmm. Just got a little penchant for, for them, for all of them. But I do feel like they are all unique in their own ways. And yeah, this one is in the middle of chaos, strategy, have to be a bit tactical, but at the same time it is, for me, like just a bit of fun. Yeah. And definitely something I think you could play with like younger kids, although you do have to be a little bit careful with how you move. I think mm -hmm. Maybe it could easily end up kind of crashing into the side because you do have to think about how many dice you have. Is there a risk that you are going to crash because you've got too many dice? Okay, now I need to shift down gears and you have to do a little bit of foresight in that way. But I mean, it's just a bit of fun, right? And I think what we've found is even when it goes into chaos mode and somebody's smashing into somebody and flipping them around, they're facing the wrong direction, mm -hmm. they have been able to catch up surprisingly and actually yeah. win the game. Yeah. And in the game that we played most recently, I thought it was completely over for one of the players. Yeah, she was <laughs> facing the wrong way and I was about half the yeah. lap ahead. Uh, and we're like, okay, well, you're just out. And yeah, she ended up, we all ended up Basically, so going across the finish line here, we were all piled up here and it was just that, I think she was in a higher gear, so she got her turn first and just like yeah. went over, right? Yeah, which is pretty epic actually. Yeah. Um, create some fun story in a way. Um. I think that's my, so I have two favorite things about Joyride. And number one is that in every game we've played, pretty much there's been elements where somebody is very far behind. Yeah. And in most racing games, you're like, okay, they're out, like they're not gonna make it up. And every single time the person has made it up and been back in competition. Uh, and I've just really enjoyed that. I think yeah. it's really, there's a like, level of design here that allows for that. And I, I like as a kind of connection to that, the fact that the dice are between one and three. So you have a little bit of gambling, but not too much. It's like this really nice balance between a bit of luck, a bit of gambling and tactical, particularly because you can lock some of the dice so you yeah. know the values. Um, and the other thing I really enjoy that I think is a nice kind of fresh twist, because I haven't played a game with them before besides video games, is the checkpoints, yeah. because it gives players a way to go about uh, getting through these checkpoints in different manners, and you can have people in different positions, and maybe they're going to use their handbrake turn and like flip around and go off the ramp, or maybe they're going to go the long way around mm -hmm. so they're in a better position, they can be rolling more dice. Yeah. Uh, you it, can it, imagine it yeah. kind of like coming to life in a real kind yeah. of race scenario or yeah but I really like the uh, the weapons as well I think that's a really fun element particularly for me because I'm sometimes behind mm -hmm. and then I can rocket you and I rocket, think that's how rocket, you rocket. do manage to let people catch up a lot of the time it could be just because the people in front make a mistake gamble yeah. too much and end up crashing themselves but also you have a little bit of control a, a little bit using the weapons to try and bring them down essentially yeah so i think that's why it also keeps you engaged into the game if you've got a rocket and a mine okay where can i place this to take down the player that's in front and it's not just reliant on that person messing up in a way right yeah. so it's a, a bit of a combination of both which i think keeps it exciting even if you feel like you're behind you want to be motivated to stay in the game yeah I think one thing that's also quite nice uh, about the system of Joyride is that, so you have these maps and you basically, the booklet's going to come with a bunch of, so you have two sides of this board, different maps, and they kind of have a basic structure. But then you have where the checkpoints go, you have like um, kind of obstacle tokens you can put on to make it more difficult. So you're going to get a lot of different variety of maps just within the box and the ones they recommend. And then there's always the opportunity for them to design more and kind of just release it for free. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's something that could be done. I also think that there could be a great community of people designing their own maps. Mm. Uh, so you can get a lot of different experiences even from just having two maps with this box, yep. let alone if you kind of do all in and you get the extra maps, which I think are leaning into the more zany. Like I know one's um, supposed to be set in a volcano or something. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's quite nice as well, that you can even just have a go and design your own maps or kind of work through a lot of different ones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then maybe one more thing I quite like as well with the damage system, that it's just reducing your capability bit by bit. And it's not that you have player elimination or that it's maybe the worst thing that can happen. Uh, I just think it's quite a nice system that you get to pick where you put this damage and what you lose, basically. Mm -hmm. Are you like, okay, I'm not going to get another item, I'll, I'll block out that slot, or I'm not going to go to fifth gear, there's too many tight turns. So you, you're in control even when you're getting griefed by the other players. Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah, I think that goes for the like whole of the game, right? There's there is element of, of control over yeah. what you're doing. Um, even with the gambling part, I mean, it's kind of up to you how many dice you're rolling mm -hmm. and what gear you're in. So there is all this, always this element of control, even if you want to push it, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think on the whole, we, we're um, quite positive. I think the only things that we maybe not didn't like, I think there isn't really anything we didn't like about it. I think one of our problems, which may just be a personal problem, was we didn't get a lot of item usage. Yeah. We'd maybe prefer if, like, especially at two players, I think, when you have more space, maybe there's a way to get more items or they were more in rotation because the map setup depends or determines how many you're going to get, and it's usually when you pass certain checkpoints. So we didn't really feel, especially at lower players, you're getting the benefit of having these items because yeah. it's quite hard to... Because if you drop a mine somewhere, people can just go either side of it, right? It's quite... Unless you have this pile up of three cars all trying to get through at the same time. Yeah. But then I know that they were demoing this at Gen Con and um, it's, I think it's not a normal experience. Usually you do get a lot of items in rotation, so maybe it was just us and it didn't quite work out. But you can also tweak the map to make it tighter as well. So Yeah, I think with some of them, like you said, like the mine and the oil slick, yeah. it is just a kind of easy for people to avoid mm -hmm. it, basically. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I use the rocket a fair amount. Yeah, the, I think the rocket is fine cause, and the nitro because you shoot them in a straight line, yeah, right? Yeah, so but it's, it's like... the things that you place onto the map which is clearly visible to other yeah. players. Yeah, kind of easy to avoid. But I guess there could be something where you just play more <laughs> aggressively mm -hmm. and probably again with more people, uh, more players, but you know, actively try and push other cars into the mine, for instance. Yeah which we I weren't doing, we were just focusing on racing, I yeah. suppose, a little bit more. But you could go into the mindset of let's just play really aggressively and, and make it very yeah. chaotic. I mean, I was trying to like tactically drop the mines. I almost always end up with mines like, you know, on the checkpoint line or something. So it was harder. Yeah. And it just people just never even came close to having to go through it. Yeah. Was our experience from a couple games. But with this one, we think it is probably going to be best for people who will be able to play it at four players, the full player count. Um, if you're only ever going to play it with two, I mean, it's fine to play, but you're really yeah. missing that kind of chaos element of smashing into each other and the um, rockets going off everywhere. And that is what sets this apart from maybe other car racing games is that chaotic element. Um, there's probably other games that you know focus on the racing mm -hmm. and going as fast as possible, maybe a bit more, where, yeah, this is the, the chaos element. So if you're only ever going to play it with two people, then we wouldn't probably recommend this version, but maybe check out the two-player version that would be yeah. available. Obviously, we haven't played that, so we can't vouch for it. But, yeah, definitely kind of beer and pretzels game, having people around and, yeah, yeah using it as a warm up or cool down game i think it's just it's just a bit of fun basically yeah i think we really enjoyed playing it and it's definitely as we kind of said at the beginning got its own space uh, yeah. essentially in in the kind of racing world and as we said we're going to do a comparison video just to show exactly where it sits um, and kind of contrast the differences between some other popular race games at the moment but let's just go into our final thoughts Final thoughts, like I said, this was something, I think the first play doing the training map, I wasn't necessarily sure, but I've become really impressed by the mechanisms, by the way the races work, by the checkpoint system. I think it's a really fun, lighter racing game that's good for everyone, but you know, from 
families up to gamers. Particularly if you want that Mario Kart-esque element with still a bit of kind of tactical racing acumen uh, that you, you know, it's not just pure luck, but also the fact yeah. that no one's ever really out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I really like it. Like I said, I'm really into these car racing games at the moment. And I feel like this does have a unique place mm. and it feels mm. kind of chaotic and just fun and wacky races-esque. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would recommend it if you like the sound of it. Yeah, and I think bonus points for the amount of variability, the fact that you can end up designing your own maps and different versions. So you can get one specifically for two player or one for groups or both. So just please remember that this was a prototype. So these are our thoughts on the prototype. Things might change, but I think the rules are almost final. Besides maybe some new items uh, and the components will supposedly be better. Mm -hmm. But that will come out to Kickstarter August 15th. And we hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if it was helpful. And we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.